Welcome to In The Workshop, a diabolical model steam engine part 14. Repairing some more problems with this engine, the cylinder and port face both need attention, as does the exhaust outlet fitting. I was always taught from an early age by my father that if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well, so I just can't leave it in this condition. I need to be happy with this engine. I can never really be happy with its general condition and quality of manufacture, and I'm not going to waste time criticising other people's work. I will leave the images of the engine to do that. A steam test on a model steam engine is very important. Always avoid buying an engine where the seller says, not tried it on steam. That's usually a dead giveaway that there's something wrong. The fixings for the steam chest cover and the steam chest are really past the best. I've decided to replace them with some modern 4BA bolts. OK, I freely admit that the restoration will then not be quite so sympathetic in this area, but I do want the engine to work so James can run it on steam whenever he wants. In case you don't know who James is, I'm referring to James Evans, a friend of mine from the northeast of England. He's 16 years old and he has a YouTube channel called Tease Cottage Guy Productions. The name of his channel is on screen at the moment. It's well worth a visit, he makes very good videos and he travels around looking at a lot of full-size steam. And leaves me in the workshop to work on stuff like this. The engine is still warm immediately following the steam test, that's why I'm using a cloth to lift the parts off. Note to self, do not buy any more of this type of gasket material because quite frankly it is rubbish. Apart from the four rusty bolts holding the steam chest onto the cylinder, there are two studs. In this image you can see that I removed those two. Have a close look at the port face and how close to the edge of the port face the bolt holes are. I'm going to flatten off the port face because it's not very good to be honest. I started off with some light strokes of a needle file. It shows that the surface is not flat. The next thing to do was to wrap a piece of emery cloth around a file and use that. Filing is an art and a skill and needs to be mastered. I've done quite a lot of it over the years, so my filing experience is considerable. It's all down to getting a feel for the job. Here I'm using some 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper wrapped around the file and now the surface is starting to look quite good. The main thing is it's much flatter than it was before I started this job. Once I removed the stud that goes halfway through the exhaust port, I drilled the hole deeper using a tapping size drill for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. This clip shows the job before I drilled the hole deeper. This is the after shot. I'm trying to save time on this video because it could get a bit tedious. The re-drilling and threading of the exhaust port distorted the top of the port face in this area. This was an ideal time to actually use the file without sandpaper covering it. After the file I used the emery cloth and after the emery cloth I used the wet or dry sandpaper. And now the port face looks really good. Well, maybe not really good, more like quite good, much better than it was. The steam ports are still in the wrong place, which is clearly visible in this clip, but does it matter? No. I'm going to continue the job regardless. Here I'm removing the end of the gland, and as you can see, there are three silicone o-rings that I've taken out of the gland. There are two holes either side of the gland which leak steam, and I really do not understand why this part of the engine was made this way. I'm going to block up these holes using soft solder. First of all, I coat the area with some Frylux solder paint because I'm going to need as much flux on this area to clean the metal as possible. After filling the hole with soft solder on side one, I turned the part over and did exactly the same on the other side. In this clip, I just started cleaning up the area with a needle file. It took quite a while, but eventually I got it to look presentable and the two holes had disappeared entirely. I should have done this job much earlier in the rebuild. I'm using a file to clean up the internal surface of the steam chest. And because now the internal surfaces are smooth, it will be a better guide for the valve. I made a pair of gaskets using much better quality gasket material. If you look at this gasket, you can see that it's not a very even shape. 
because the measurements are copied from the steam chest with a felt tip pen. Now the fun begins. Because the exhaust port goes much further into the hole, part of the fitting protrudes into the hole for the bolt, so I drilled that out and here I'm threading the hole. And I'm cleaning up all the threads because some of them are quite badly damaged. This is a 5BA tap. After doing this, I started reassembly. But I really wasn't happy with this. I need to do it a better way. These bolts have had their day. The two studs, well, I don't know where they came from. In the end, I re-drilled all of the holes in the top of the cylinder to exactly the same depth, using an eighth of an inch diameter drill bit, which is tapping size for 4BA. These holes are quite deeply drilled in the top of the cylinder. As you can see, the tap goes all the way in, but it's the same now for all of them. What I also had to do, which I haven't shown, is drill the holes a bit larger in the steam chest. I drilled them clearance size for 4BA. I did that on two of the holes, and the others were slightly enlarged to a drill size above, just because it didn't fit well in the first place. And here's the finished job. The steam chest and cover are now held in place securely with six brand new 4BA hexagon head bolts. I've reconnected the airline, I just need to turn on the compressed air. I also fitted the exhaust pipe extension, and as I moved the engine on the bench, something kept happening, the sound changed. At first I didn't know why and I thought, well this is a bit strange, what's going on? Then I spotted the hole in the bench. You can clearly hear how the sound changes as I cover the hole with the spanner. This hopefully is the penultimate episode, there will be one more which is another steam test and I hope it will be successful. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.